challenge them. So you have to prepare the environment. Anyway, you get me, you get me sitting, my feet are on the ground, and I am always prepared if they need it with some form of upper extremity support. So if they need it, what would be the options of where they could place their arms? Tell me. What do you think? Be in their lap, where else? To the side. And if they're if they're struggling and need something, and this is like we're thinking about bedside right now, just so you can sort of get a sense of that arm. Where else could they be? Two tray tables, right? So get two tray tables ready. They're available, so use them in case you need them. You might not need them. The first thing I want to know when someone gets up and sitting is obviously you're going to describe their posture, but then you want to know. Can they sit supported or unsupported? Okay? Right? Question one. If they can't sit unsupported, if they can only sit supported, you describe their posture, you describe the environmental supports that they're using, whether their hands are on the surface or they're leaning back against something or their um, um, hands are on two tray tables, what, what are the supports? You want to time how long they can stay in that position. How long can they sit unsupported? Good, good, good thing to know about. How long can someone sit unsupported? I want to know. Let's say their posture. Let's say they're sitting like this. Right. What I want to know is, can they get out of that? What would you do to see if someone could get out of the position? You give them a verbal cue, right? What would you say, Gail? Sit up tall, right? See if they can respond. If they don't respond, say her sit up tall, nothing happens. Right? So, so what I'm going to do is I might put my hand in her little back, maybe put one hand on her shoulder, and just give her a very light movement cue and say to her, Neha, can you sit up tall? So give her the verbal cue and the movement cue and see if she does. Right? And maybe she'll do it. And then you're going, great. You say, to, you say to someone, sit up tall, and you give them a light cue and they don't respond. What else can you do? Because what, what, what do you want to find out about also? Can they get there? Yeah, can they get there? Do they have the range? Is there a biomechanical constraint that's keeping them from getting on midline? Or is it they're weak? Their, you know, their motor control is aberrant, you know, they can't find, just can't find it, you know. So I want to know if there's any, if there's anything blocking her ability to get on here. So what I might do then is give her a more forceful cue at that point. But you do the light cue first and then you give a more forceful cue just to see, oh, boy, she has the range, she can get there. And then you could say to her, I'm going to, I'm going to um, let go with my hands and then you see them just... She collapses back down. I'm going to think, well, it could be muscle endurance, right? It could be she can't, she can't engage her postural muscles to hold on to that, you know, position, or she's <coughs> unaware of where midline is. So it doesn't mean it has no meaning. You can sit up tall, get on midline. What's the next thing you want to know? See how long she can maintain. How long she can maintain, it and can she hold on? Then you can start, you can start some perturbations, even though she's sitting support. So let's say she has two tray tables. And she was against the back of the chair, but she's not now, right? So sit up tall, and she's holding for a couple of minutes. And then I say to her, don't let me move you, right? Don't let me move you. Can you hold on to it? Don't let me move you. Don't let me move you. Miracle things you can document are time sitting in whatever posture she gets into, if she can get up tall with either a verbal cue or a, or a, a manual cue. You want to see if she can hold on to that. And then just see if she can maintain, give her a little, a few perturbations, see if she can hold on to it. So you put your hands over that. What are you noticing? Mm -hmm. Line, but he's, um, you know, a little bit close to your pelvic tilt. I just want to notice that. And let's say he was sitting like that, right? I would document that. And, and he's, he's still holding himself up unsupported, but it's not pretty, right? It's not midline. Can he get to midline? So I'm going to say, part, can you sit up tall? 
Oh my God, he's fabulous. Can't do that. Can't get up there. I'm going to say, Parth, sit up tall, and I'm going to give him a cue. Okay, and he gets up there. And I'm really happy. So he's up there. And again, same thing. If he can't get up there, I might give him some pressure and then over pressure to see if I can get him into that position. Because again, I want to know if there are any mechanical barriers, right? Once he's up there, what do I want to know? I can hold on to it. So, can he sit unsupported? I can time that. And then you can give him an expected external perturbation. And this is the order I would go in. Don't let me move you. So you say, don't let me move you. Don't let me move you. You don't necessarily have to be on the side. You could be in front of them, too. Never on a rolling stool. What, what would be good about me being in front of him? Is he midline? Right. And if he, if he starts to fall forward, I'm right here. The worst thing that happens is, Big whoop, right? Okay. Come on, slow with the um, slow with the pressure. Don't let me move you. Go in the back, go to the side. Then you can do rotation. Don't let me move you. Now, what do you notice between as I'm moving my hands? Is he staying on midline? Mm -hmm. So one thing you have to be careful about this is when you're giving pressure. If I say, "Don't let me move you," don't don't let me move you. Don't let me move you. And then I let go. You're going to see it pop. No popping allowed. Okay? You want to do it smooth so they keep holding, 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 holding different pressures. So you move slow. You come on slowly. Don't move you. And you come off really slowly. Right? Then I want to know um, internal perturbations. Right? So what could I ask him to do? Raise your hand. Can you raise your other one? Perfect, right? Can you bring your knee to your chest? Hold on. A little bit. Good. Other side. Of you. Good. Okay. And he starts to go over sideways, right? I'm going to note that, right? I want to know. If he lifts the knee up and he moves all the way back, I want to know, right? You want to know that. You want to know that he can hold on to midline while his arms are moving. Good. So now what do I want to do? So you're building your sequence. Now what do I want to do? What? Unexpected. So I'm not going to tell him. I said, we're going to keep testing your balance, and then you give him a nudge. And what do you want to see? <coughs> you want to see him come back. You want to see him come back. You want to see him. You're not giving him a nudge where you're expecting his arm. When he's off midline, can he regain it with, uh, um, with basically weight shifts? That's the next process. Touch my hand. Right. So what you're looking for them to do is shift off of their base of support. Not big shifts, but some shifts. Okay? Okay. They could, you know, they can change up from hand here, right? Can you touch my hand here? He's about to do something. I see that look on your face. <laughs> Um, and then you want to make sure they can come back, right? Okay. And then you can you can give them an external perturbation. Well, please let me do this. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and, you know, and see if they then come back. Okay. So it comes back. So you're really happy. Okay. So you do internal, external, but you're doing it. You're working now towards at least the sitting limits of stability, right? Okay. So you follow that. And that's basically, that's basically the deal with sitting.